Now this is the final journal and I will show you the whole creating process in the video but for the first uh, I will show you the inside and I will flip through the journal with you. So stay tuned. This is Mel from Mel Pink Bujo. So it's a very big kind of journal. It's about 29 centimeters by 17 and the spine is three and a half to four centimeters wide. It's soft cover, as you can see here. Here's some key charm hanging from an elastic closure. This is the front with this candle and this stone floor and here's a table. I used some golden shiny cord. This is the back of the journal with the stone floor and the wine barrels and this little label made with love in German. As I said, it's all um, it's a soft cover journal. These are the charms with some buttons and beads, all kinds of stuff, some wooden beads, painted beads, a flower, more flowers, more flowers. <laughs> so you can put them out of the way when you open up your journal. The elastic closure is into, goes into here so it cannot go anywhere if you uh, open your journal. And you can put this out of the way too, so that you can journal in it very easy. So that, let's open it up. As you turn around, I will show you the details in the making of. And this is another fabric. This is also golden and shiny and sparkling. It does not show through very good in the video, but this is a very, very beautiful uh, kind of um, fabric. This is a tea dyed paper. I tea dyed by myself scrapbooking paper, some sewing, some fabric, ruffles, a pocket. I made this flower, paper flower by myself. Some more dyed paper. I use textile uh, dye, textile color to dye this kind of papers. It's a flip out, so you have a big journaling spot and some kind of hidden journaling. This paper is tea dyed again and a fold out again. Textile color diet, some more sewing, a pocket, a handmade journaling tag. I will link the video um, to how to create uh, for how to create these kind of uh, tags down below in the info box. Here are some more pockets. Soon in fabric pockets, some more journaling spots. This is my printable. So it's only a bit of paper. This I cut out. Some journaling spots and you can journal on this side too, of course, or you can put other stuff into this pockets or change the stuff up. More pockets, more of these paper flowers, more of my handmade and soon around tags. Some more paper. This is cut out. And I did a bit of uh, stamping or stenciling um, on the back side and I inked the edges. This is the middle of the first signature. Some more pockets, some more papers that I cut out again. And here we have a very big, very large journaling tag, which gives you lots of journaling space. And a big pocket again. Scrapbooking paper. This is scrapbooking paper and tea light paper. And as you can see here, I hinged it together with different colors. This again is a piece of scrapbooking paper. This is one third of a plastic plate mat. It's golden and shiny again. This is structured and this is not structured at all. You can journal on this with a permanent marker. This paper is dyed with some party streamers. Baking paper just for the sound of it. Some more hinging pages together. Some more journaling space. It's a part of a, a printable book page, which I tea dyed. 
here's the pocket again journaling space you can glue something onto here to make it a journaling space or you can just use it as a pocket as i did in this time then i have a very big envelope over here with the big journaling card oh <laughs> it's upside down sorry i made by myself you can stuff many more things into here if you want to and you can journal on this on this envelope too of course you can embellish it more this is waterfall notepad i made by myself i will hinge the video uh, i will link the video down below in the info box as well back side little paper some more of this pockets or tuck spots this is a self-made journaling card again with some buttons and beads on it baking paper fold out here are some more pockets and a heart-shaped paper clip some paper little tag little card i suit around here and so this stays in place so this is only for looking good you can journal on it like on the back side of this plastic placemat with some permanent marker and this is a pocket again i will link the tutorial from the people i have the ideas from down below in the info box as well this is only a little bit of paper i ink the edges to make it look more interesting strip of washi tape then you can put it into here this is an old book page and some plastic and again one of these cards and i like these kind of photos it's a very old book and the paper is so thin so i try to use it as page in my journal but it ripped instantly so i thought uh, i could use it another way some more tea dyed pages some fabric and lace ruffles suit on onto some um, scrapbook paper more pockets and this is a big sheet of an old calendar and it has a funny saying on it in german and it's a fold out you can journal on this paper too some more stamping or stenciling in this case fold out scrapbooking paper tea dyed paper and this is cool this is a fabric a kind of hidden journaling spot a fabric flap and it just gives the journal uh, something to look at something it makes it more interesting so the other side of the uh, calendar with a funny german saying on it And again a pocket and a ripped piece of paper to journal on or you can glue photos on or you can journal underneath or put a photo onto here everything will go fold out page and the back side of the pocket and this has a zipper on it some more paper I just rounded the edges and put this cute little sticker on a very beautiful book page and here again so you can put much more stuff into here and the back of the cover and here you can see i sewed the label uh, onto the cover later when the cover was already uh, ready so you can see this um, the stitches a bit but i don't mind it so close it up again, put the charm into place and that's it for the flip through. Thanks for watching. Today I want to create a junk journal cover out of this bubble wrap envelope, which is a very big size. It's plain white and empty. And this kind of fabric, I want to call it it's i like the picture i like the candle and the wine barrels and this stone cellar kind of thing and it's the same size as my envelope and i would like to sew around 
Of course, you could glue it on and leave the flap open. Then you would have a pocket. You can cut open this end and you would have two pockets. But because it is a very kind of thick fabric, I want to sew around and because I like the look of it. Then you can flip it over and just fold it in the middle and do one or two signatures. But I like to have a little bit more of a spine so that I can put two or three or maybe four signatures into it. And for the inside, so I will glue this flap close or see it close, we will see. And you can see it's the perfect size. So I can sew all around. And for the inside, I thought maybe I could use this kind of golden fabric. I think this would look very good. It does not come through very good through my camera, but it's a bit of shiny golden yellow kind of fabric. And I think it goes well with the outside fabric. So I will go to my sewing machine and I'll be back in the moment. As you can see, it fits nearly perfectly into my fabric, but it's a bit shorter than my fabric. So I have to flip this over or fold this over a bit more tighten. I have to tighten it up. And I decided to glue this flap down and fold the fabric over. So I want to use some some kind of adhesive. So now we will put our, wrap, uh, our bubble wrap envelope into our fabric. To hold this all in place, I will use some of these big jumbo paper clips. Usually I would fold in the edges another way, like this and this. So you get a bit more kind of a rounded edge. But I think because the fabric is also folded, I will try it another way this time. So you have a bit more of a edgy edge. <laughs> Don't know. Everything is in the place I wanted it to. This is our front and our back, so our outside of the cover. The, the bubble wrap envelope shows through, but because it's all white and nothing um, nothing special onto it, I think it's okay. You could definitely put another fabric under, underneath, or you can paint or do everything you want. You can glue something on or sew something on and then put this kind of uh, fabric, shining through fabric on the outside. Now, as I said, you can just fold it over in the middle and then you have the, the space for one signature. It's totally okay, but for my personal opinion, I like to do two or three or more signatures just so that it's not this kind of notebook, but more the kind of journal. That's, because, uh, that's why I um, want to have a, um, a spine which is very uh, a little bit wider, maybe two or three centimeters. Um, it just depends on what you like. It's just one or two steps more. You don't um, only sew around the edges, but you have to sew around the middle. Maybe here and here. I will measure it a bit. You can eyeball it so that you have a, a more sturdy spine. So I will talk this to my sewing machine and I will be back in a moment. Here is the result after the first sewing. It was a bit of a challenge because the cover is uh, thicker than I thought. Uh, I thought my sewing machine would go through like through uh, hot butter to say so. Uh, it's finally okay, but <laughs> so I ran into some issues. I want to sew around um, a, kind, a little kind of messy, um, but it, it looks a bit of messy, but I wanted to have it more messier, but I had to pull and push and 
go forward and backward and oh it was was a bit of a challenge but it worked out i made two rows because uh, i wanted to secure the fabric very well you can see it in the inside a bit more better i think on the uh, lighter uh, parts and it's a bit crooked as i said so i cut my fabric for the inside of my um, junk journal cover size i uh, frayed the edges it worked out very fine this time it was no big problem the needle did not broke anymore break anymore um, it just went through like like through hot butter like i wanted it to yeah i like the look of it i used the stitch lines i had already but on some ways uh, some some places um i made a third stitch line but I don't, I don't mind. I like the look. Now uh, the cover is ready now. Now I can put my signatures through my spine. I love how this fabric um, frayed edges looks. I did not have this in my mind when starting creating. I just grabbed what I had at hand. For the signatures, I will just punch holes. You can measure it out or you can just eyeball it because it's a very, uh, it's, it's a junk journal, as I said, and it's uh, not perfect at all. I, I don't want to measure it out um, for this journal. I do it sometimes, but I will just poke my holes, three holes, one, uh, one at the top, one at the middle and one at the bottom and try to line them up. So two or three holes here the same amount of holes here and here and i forgot to uh, put a closure into it it uh, makes definitely the most sense for me to put a closure when you have your outside ready so you can poke a hole here and here on the same height and then you can go a button onto here and do an elastic closure like an elastic band and you can hide the knot of the elastic band um, underneath the inside cover. I did not think about it too much, so I don't have a closure by now. You can just uh, wrap around some some sorry silk or some um, fabric, some lace, or uh, even uh, an elastic band, and don't secure it onto your cover. This is another way to make closure. There are so many ways, but I I like my closure to be inside my journal so that it cannot go anywhere when i open up my journal so i will think about it because of the big size of this journal i have to look what kind of papers i will use it's nearly a four size so this is an a4 sheet of paper if you fold it in the middle and put it into your journal it will be very small looking it's totally okay, you can just do it, or you can maybe fold it this way so that you have a longer and a shorter side. This would lo look nice too. Okay, it's a bit too long. Um, you can make a flap and then have to fold out, or you can sew or glue this in and have a tuck spot. And then you can alter your pages. You can sew them, some of them more at the top, more and some of them more at the bottom, so that they alter. But I like to use the, the whole space I have in a journal for some of the pages, not for all. I like to use shorter pages as well. But I have these big sheets of paper. These are uh, 30 by 30 centimeters or 12 by 12 inches scrapbooking papers and if I use uh, this I could fold them in the middle and just cut them a bit or make a pocket like this or even at the top so that you have a tuck spot here if you fold them in the middle they will have uh, nearly the um, exact size or you can fold them a bit more like this, shorten them here or here or flip them over and then you have a full full page, a full uh, journal page, the full size of your cover. 
I will do my signatures and then I will be right back when I have assembled them and when I will uh, bind them in, I will show you. Now I have my signatures ready to go to say so. I just suit around some pages and choose some pages, but they are not ready yet for binding. I have to assemble my signatures. So for now, for this step, I will put this away. This is for later. But I decided that I want to put an eyelet through here so that I can hang some charms um, onto my spine as I do usually in my journals. So I just use my eyelet pliers, eyelet uh, punching tool to say so and show you the process. I just eyeball the middle and then punch a hole. So my eyelet is set now. I can apply thumb strings now and then I can let hang some charms, beads, buttons, whatever you have at hand or what you like, you can let it hang from your spine. It's just for decoration purposes. I decided to add a closure with this black elastic band and I want, I don't want, I don't want the knots when I use a button, I will have a knot right here and a knot for this, for this elastic band right over here. And I don't like when you can see this. And because I covered the inside already, I would have to cover it up or live with it. But I don't like it. It's my, it's my personal opinion, uh, my personal preference. And I know I want to have three signatures. So I have to punch three holes at the top in the middle and at the bottom and I will just eyeball it and punch one hole in this moment just for my elastic closure and then I can maybe use this hole for my signature binding in the next step. We will see. So I just eyeball where the middle is. I think here looks good and just punch a hole through my cover all the way through. Now I need a needle and some elastic band. Let's see. I just thread my needle with this elastic band like I would do with any kind of thread. And in this case, I will have the knot so that the elastic uh, band cannot go anywhere right over here in the inside of the cover. You will be able to see this later, but for my personal opinion, uh, for my personal preference, it's okay. I can live with it because you have three signatures in there and you will not be able to see it when you open the journal in an instant. You can see it in the end, but I will live with it. So because of the structure of the fabric, it will be a bit uh, difficult to see the um, hole. So I will have to look out very well where I punched it. I just go through my cover and I will pull my elastic closure through but not the whole way. I will leave two tails so that I can make a knot. So I don't uh, make the knot very tight, just uh, a bit loose because I want to see if my band is too long or if, if it's okay. Oh. And this was a failure because I have my needle on my elastic band and cannot uh, yeah, it cannot go anywhere. This is not the best idea. So I have to do it another way, I think. Mm. Okay, this did not work out so well. So I have to do it another way. Let's see. 
This can happen, it's no big deal. You just have to sort out which way works out for you. I think it will work out when I go through my cover again, through the same hole. You can, of course, uh, do a punch two holes, which are in a bit of a distance, but not too much. Um, then your closure will be safe. And if you pull on the inside, it cannot go anywhere, but I just will use the same, uh, the same hole I poked because I uh, will only pull uh, my closure to the outside, not to the inside. I just have to think about it. Um, or you just have to think about it if you will redo this. Yes, I think this will work out. Oops, okay. Yes, this will do. So, I only pull on my elastic closure for now, but I have enough, uh, enough uh, of this band on the outside. So when I will pull very tight on the inside now, it can flip through the inside and then you have to redo this. But I think I will work this way so now the knot is not very tight only for um, the first trying this looks good you have to check out how uh, much space you need for your for your signatures and i know that my book will grow a bit more so i have to uh, leave a bit of um, an extra of this elastic closure so that it that it will be not too tightened up when I add more stuff to my journal and it gets thicker and grows and I don't want my thread to... If it's a bit straight here, it's okay, but I don't want it uh, to go this way. And you have to look out because it's a soft cover. There is... Um, because it's a soft cover, it can happen that it is crinkled up like here when your closure is too too strong. But if your closure is too loose, it will not do the job or not do the job so well so let's see as you can see my signature is too wide um, I will fold it in and trim it off um, but the step is not done yet so I have to think about that when I do my closure for now because uh, on the, the knot on the inside is not covered or is not covered yet um, and if you bind your signatures, um, I will show you. If you will use this this hole again and bind your signature exact in this same hole, it might be a bit difficult to uh, redo the knot, to uh, maybe pull it a lot, uh, pull the um, elastic closure a bit more in and make the knot a bit more, that the closure is more tightened up. Um, so maybe I will do my binding at two millimeters bit um, next to my closure. We will see in the next step, um, but I think you will be able to redo the knot uh, later. When you pull it very straight, you will not be able to untighten it uh, like this, but you will have to Oh, sorry, but you will have to cut it open and then you are left with less material. So I would pre I would prefer to leave a bit more of the elastic closure so that your journal can grow because you can make it a bit more uh, tighten in the end, but it's uh, more difficult when your binding is, uh, is in your journal. It's difficult to make the closure wider. So now, as you can see, I just straighten it up in every direction I can. And you have to make sure that your knot is not too small, so that your knot don't uh, slip through the hole. Just to make sure, I will make a double knot. Of course, you will be able to see a double knot because it's thicker, uh, more better than a little knot. But for me, it's more important that it does not slip through the cover and it will be covered up with my signatures not perfectly but for my opinion it will do the job so 
tighten it up in every direction. Oh, and this is what I mean uh, a few, mo few moments before. If you pull too much on the inside, your uh, elastic closure will be able to slit through this hole if you don't do two holes. But because normally you would open your journal, journal in and then close it and then you will uh, pull only in this direction. You won't open your journal and pull in this direction. So for me it um, never occurs or it never happens that my elastic closure um, went the wrong way. For the, so for me it's totally okay to use only the one, um, the one hole. If you want to use this hole for your binding, you can pull on the, uh, the elastic band and then use your needle with your thread for binding, elastic band or I use waxed cord most of the time and then you go, then you go through, the, um, through the same hole or nearly the same hole, it went just through and you can bind your signature in so this is a, a way you can do it but you can uh, punch the next holes beneath the closure. It just depends on what you like. I decided that I want this key charm hanging from my closure. And because I already did the knot on the inside of the cover, I will just apply the key charm with two jump rings. So now our key charm is hanging from the closure. If you open the journal up, you can put it aside, or you can put it aside, and then you can journal, and the charm is not in your way. So now for binding in my signatures. I will show you how to do it for the first signature, and then I will speed up the process. Usually I bind in my signatures one by one, so the first one first, then the second one, and so on. But in this case, because I already have uh, a hole here, I will bind in my second signature first, and then the first, and then the third. So the first thing to do is to assemble all my pages the way I want them to. Maybe I want some of the pages sit a bit higher or a bit lower, or right in the middle. I'm happy with this. Now, now we have to put three holes into our signatures. I will just eyeball in this case. So the first hole will go over here. I try to find the middle. I think this will work out. We will see. Let's see. Yes. So I just eyeball where I want to have the other holes, maybe here. And just make sure that, that your signatures aren't, aren't moving so much. You can use uh, paper clips, but I uh, will do it another way this time. So here's my middle hole, and because I have my uh, eyelet over here, I don't want my hole to be right here, but maybe some kind of here. So again, back to the middle hole. Now I eyeball where I want my holes in the signature to be. I think this looks fine. And then I, then I punch the hole through hole, the whole uh, cover 
as I did for the closure. So here's the third hole and I think this should be the middle. So you cannot see the holes very good but I see the holes on my signatures and I will try to find the holes again but I will think I think it will work out. So now we need a needle like this one over here and some thread. You need to thread three lengths at the time of your journal cover. This is a perfect length. So now for the binding process. You have to find the middle hole of your signature again. And then you go from the inside of the first signature you're binding in through all the holes of the whole signature. Um, here and here, some kind of here. Yes. Then you go to the middle hole. In this case, it's the same hole as our closure. Put the thread too, to the hole, through the hole, but you have to leave a little bit, maybe this long, of a tail so that you can bind your signatures in, in the end. Now move on to some of the other holes. It doesn't matter if it is the bottom hole or the top hole. It's a bit difficult to see because of the structure of my cover. So I will go in from the inside again with my awl, where I punch the, the holes with. To find the hole I poked again. Okay, in this case it would be better if I had uh, put just a little um, a point with, with a pen onto it, so that I could see it better, but it doesn't matter, we can poke a new hole, in this case, ah. oh, I found the hole, perfect. So then you go from the outside, just look out for your closure, that, this is, that it is uh, free, so now from the outside, the inside Maybe here yes from the outside of the cover to the inside um, make sure your thread is not too loose but don't pull too strong because then you will pull the tail uh, out from inside and then I will do it from this side you have to go through all the the holes in your signature. I will do it one by one this time. So that you can see the process more better. And back to the inside of your first signature, you will bind into your journal. So leave this little tail. The thread is not too loose and not too strong for this moment. And then you go to the third hole, the top or the bottom, it doesn't matter, the hole you did not use in this moment. And then again from the inside to the outside to all the holes you poked before. you can see here, I went all the way through all my pages. Make sure your uh, thread is not too loose and not too strong, like on the outside again. 
and then you have to find your third hole again oh yes here it is the needle goes to the outside and this is the only tricky part now you have to go back again to the first hole you used it's a bit tricky because the closure is there too but it will work out fine in the end gently pull your thread so that you have a nice line over here not too loose and not too strong again and then through the same holes of your signature if you pull them very tight sometimes you can go there uh, in one go but i like to go there um, hole by hole just to make sure that i punch no new holes but that i use the holes i poked before There you can see my needle went there just in one go, even if I did not suppose it to do so. Thanks to my needle. Now, make sure that you have one end of the tail on the right side and one end of the tail on the left side. So not both of the ends on one side, like this or this, but one end uh, of the thread on every side and then you have to pull gently make sure that your thread is not too tight but not too loose because if it's too loose your signatures will move like this and if you pull too strong it can rip it depends on your thread or your pages can rip it just depends on the material materials you use so i will Pull and pull and it's the kind of thread I did not use before any time. That's why I went there a bit uh, with a bit more caution. Okay. Okay, I think I can pull a bit more even. Don't know. Uh, oh, here's a bit of thread left. That's why I can pull it anymore okay it's just gently pulling okay my thread don't come through anymore this is good and strong it's not too loose and it's not uh grunching my uh, my cover up or anything so i think this will be um tight enough now you have both uh, both tails on uh, uh, one tail on every side and now you tie a very good knot so left over right tie a knot right over left tie a knot again okay and because i like to make it as secure as possible tie a knot uh, a third knot left over right that's it now you can leave your tails longer i will show you and you can decorate them or you can cut them any uh, size you want i would left um, maybe a centimeter or two um, or more from my knot so that the knot will not unravel but it just depends on what you like i think in this case i will shorten my thread just at the same length as my journal cover that's it so now i will bind in my first and my last signature as you can see here the knot is sitting here it's showing uh, through a, a little bit but i think it is okay for this journal i will speed the binding process up and put it onto some music I wanted to show you something so because i have uh, this uh, structures uh, structured cover and i don't will be able to see where i punched my uh, first hole i will use a different technique by now so i just poked the hole um so now i will hold them in place 
remove my punching tool very very gently and then I will go to the first hole with my needle just to hold the signatures in place and so that I cannot lose my uh, first hole to say so. Leave a bit of a tail, maybe this long, and then go on with the process you already saw. So if it happens that your thread uh, comes out on the same side as your tail you left at the beginning of the binding process, you just tuck one end of the tail, just uh, it doesn't matter which side or under, and then you have um, one string on every side. If you just eyeball it, can happen that your uh, holes you punch are not in the very uh, same uh, place. For me, it doesn't matter. Um, in th for this kind of journal, if I wanted to have them all the same um, height, I would have um, measured it and made me uh, made the holes the same place to stay. But for me, it's totally okay, like it turned out. So this is our journal so far. We have the uh, charm, added the charm to the elastic closure. We have bound in our signatures. It turned out that they are not in the same place. It went away a bit very crooked at this, <laughs> at the bottom. Um, usually I have uh, the holes in, in the same uh, place to be, the same distance. But um, for this journal, I think it adds to this kind of journal. I like it very much. So it's not embellished. I will do this later and then show you the whole flip through. Just let us flip through um, the journal like it is um, in this stage of the creation process. So I bound in my signatures. Um, it turned out this signature is upside down. I just, um, I just learned when I was... Uh, ready with the binding in and I thought okay will I turn it round again or um, I just will leave it as it is because I like this too this kind of waterfall effect and I like it um, to be upside down because I think it adds to the journal too oh and I decided that I will have pockets ah okay no pockets for me I wanted to have pockets inside um, and I just if I want if I had a uh, if I would add pockets, I would have sewn them in this time, uh, this this way, and then here, just on, and here, and then I would have had a pocket here and a pocket here. But um, I forgot, <laughs> I forgot to sew in my pockets, and now I bound in the signatures, and so I will leave it as it is for this journal. Maybe because of the structure of this, um, I can use some. Um, some pins, um, how do you call it? Not bulb pins, but safety pins. Maybe I can use some safety pins to put something on here. We will see. It just can happen if you create a journal that you forget something or something that uh, does, does not work out as you want it to, and then you have to find another way or just leave it as it is. But now for the signatures so far. Um, half a page, here's some embellishment, some, uh, some, um, fabric ruffles and a tuck spot or a pocket, fold out page, this is dyed with um, textile color, this is just tea light by myself, another fold out, some stitching, pocket, two pockets, I just stitched into the middle and you can journal on here, on the paper, more pockets, the middle of the first signature, more pockets, journaling space, more pockets, 
more sewing on paper, tea dyed paper, uh, fabrics, textile dyed paper, journaling space. This is the page I wanted to have the other side around when you open up the journal, but I like it this way too, to say so. I just hinged some pages together because they were, were not uh, big enough on their own. This is one third of a, a plastic a placemat and I just stabilized the, the spine uh, where I folded the placemat with some white um, with some white tape, some wide, wider adhesive, some more journaling space, fold out. You can glue a few this on, then you will have a pocket or a tuck spot. Bakery paper, baking paper, just because of this um, the sound. Some more hinged pages. Here you have a tuck spot again. And here we have a pocket. Then this big envelope with much space to grow. You can put many things into. Tuck spot, pocket again. This is fabric textile color dyed again. Bakery paper, fold out page. A few more pockets. This is a Little pocket too. Uh, these are no pockets. I just sewed it, um, sewed around the other side of the plastic placement. You can write on this side because it's it's even as you can see. This side is structured, so you cannot do anything with it. But I like the look of it, and you can journal on here with some um, permanent uh, DVD or CD markers, or you can just put something on. I will show you later. Um, this is the page on uh, I had out of a book. It's sewn into this um, kind of acetate or plastic, and so you have two pockets, fabric ruffles, journaling space, and a little tuck spot. This is a page of an old calendar with a funny German saying on it. And a fold out. You can journal on this uh, side, of course, too. Fold out, journaling space. Um, this is a fabric flap, like a hidden journaling spot. I just sewed in before binding in my signatures. The other side with another funny thing of the calendar. Journaling space, tuck spot or pocket, fold out page. This is scrapbooking paper I bought. And the other side of the pocket, and here you have a zipper and a sticker. And again, two pockets. So this is the thickness of the journal this time. But I will embellish it and then it will be a bit thicker, of course. This is a binding so far.